Hi everyone and welcome to episode number 205 of the Karen Knits podcast. My name is Karen and I'm coming to you from South Central Pennsylvania where I live, where I work, where I knit and get into all kinds of other crafting shenanigans. I am so happy to have you here with me today. It is Saturday, March the 30th, 2024 and tomorrow is Easter Sunday. Happy Easter everyone. So if you're a new viewer, thank you so much for popping by to see what I have to natter about. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back for another week to see what I'm nattering about. I'm so happy to have everyone here with me. I had mentioned in my last podcast that I'm really working towards hoping to get my channel up to and breaking the thousand subscriber mark. I'm getting closer, but if you are here and you're watching and you haven't subscribed yet and you come back especially if you come back week after week please hit the subscribe button um, it really will help my little itty bitty little channel it'll make all of real happy too it'll put a smile on her little face <laughs> but if you have not yet subscribed it would be wonderful if you would subscribe to my channel it and like the videos comment I love reading your comments and it all helps my little channel um helps it get a little bit more notice from youtube which i know there's like a thousand and one or a lot more knitting podcasts for you guys to watch but i'm so happy to have anyone and everyone that comes by to watch me it's just, i love it i'm so happy so also, the other administrative thing I wanted to mention, I will be drawing some winners next podcast for my um, hashtag, what on earth did I call it? Box of Socks Make Along 2024. Box of Socks MAL 2024. I will be drawing the first quarterly prizes for that next week. Um, next Saturday. So I will do a cut line at the end of the day on, on Sunday and I'll start any any finished objects that come in after the 1st of April or 1st of April and onwards I will enter those into the drawings for the second quarter. So, and there's a pile of socks in there. Oh there's some gorgeous socks. You guys are doing a fantastic job with all the socks you're knitting. I haven't added any of my own in there because it's just simpler not to have to figure out how to take my entries out because I'm clearly not gonna be entered into my own draw. <laughs> so, so this week I have two finished objects to show you and some progress on another one of my whips. So I'm not sure this might be a shorter episode. Don't hold your breath because I get paid to talk for a living, so <laughs> I can talk and talk and talk. At least I've quit talking in my sleep. I even used to do that when I was a teenager and in my 20s. I talked in my sleep too. <laughs> I have outgrown that, thankfully. So, my first finished object are my Sock Madness 18 Round 2 socks. They're all done. When I saw you last, I forget where I was. I think I had one complete and the other one I was somewhere on the foot. I think. I don't remember. Bad podcaster. Bad podcaster. So these are the Itty Gran, Itty Gran socks. They're the round two socks for Sock Madness 18. And this is a pattern by, I'm sorry, I'm just looking at my notes over <laughs> beside me here. This is a pattern by Anna Zhuravleva. And they're so pretty. I am a fan. I enjoy doing twisted stitches. I know a lot of people don't really like them for all sorts of reasons. I find these actually do not bother my hands at all. So these were done using 2.25 millimeter needles. The yarn is yarn I dyed myself. And I like them. I made the size medium. There's a 64 stitch uh, pattern. I always 
knit my sock madness socks to the minimum specifications because typically they don't fit me properly so I just I knit them for the joy of knitting them the joy of learning new techniques the joy of challenging myself and they go into a gift gift collection or they sit in the drawer and look pretty <laughs> I am planning on getting all of these on to um, I plan on sorting through all of my socks and getting the ones that don't fit properly sorted out so that I can give them away. The second finished objects, I'm going to switch them and put them on my metal sock blockers. Uh, if you'll just give me two seconds, because as we know, I typically can't. I try to talk and do this at the same time and it sometimes works. <laughs> it doesn't always work. There's times when I'm trying to do two things at once like this and <laughs> I stop talking because I'm concentrating on what else I'm doing. <laughs> but anyway, so these are my second finished object for the week. And these, when I last showed you, there we go these are my toe up two at a time sort of shorty socks and they are done using I'm using the leftover yarn I had from my chickadee fiber arts advent calendar from 2023 from just from this last year I've made two pair of Two pair of socks with the leftovers. The first pair I used um, the leftover yarn from days 1 through 12 and the second pair I used the leftover yarn from day 13 through 24. I do the toes, heels and in this case the cuff in bare yarn and all the rest of it was done using the leftover yarns from my advent calendar from last year. I'd used the initial, or I'd used the first part of the yarn was all used in my Ariana cardigan and I had a little bit left over so that's what that went to. So two finished objects this week. I'm very happy with that. Very very happy with that. Now Sock Madness is round two has officially finished although we had until I think their deadline was about lunchtime on the first of April Monday the first and everyone's finished already it was all the spots were filled sometime on Friday earlier in the day midday Friday So technically the next round, round three, can the specs might drop any time now. My gut feel on this is that it won't that won't happen until after the weekend. They actually extended the t amount of time we had for round two by a day because of Easter weekend and a lot of people being busy with all sorts of Easter events. So even though everyone did finish, my gut feel is that we won't move on to round three until we might see the specs on Sunday or Monday. I kind of don't think we'll be starting much before, I don't think we'll start before Tuesday. But I could be wrong. And I'm excited and ready to start whenever, whenever that might happen. So in the meantime, I have spent I finished mine on, oh I didn't write that down, I think I finished mine Monday or Tuesday? Might have been, fin at least Monday or Tuesday, they might have even finished on Sunday. Might have been finished for Sunday or Monday I finished mine I think. I should have marked that down but, oops, but might have been finished for several days. So I thought it's probably a good thing 
that I rest my hands a little bit just because there's a lot of knitting with sock madness. So I have spent a fair bit of time since I finished my round two socks, I spent a fair bit of time working on diamond art painting. So I finished off one and I've, I don't have them with me. They're over in the other room and I've got a good start on a second one. The second one is probably almost half done. So instead of putting any strain on my hands, it was on my neck instead because I sit there with my head all scrunched down and leaning forward working on and working on that and listening to audiobooks. So I just finished listening to The Dead Key by, I think it's D.M. Pulley. It was a really good book. I really enjoyed it. And it's just, I, I really enjoyed it. So now I'm going to be on the hunt for a new audiobook to start reading or listening to. I'm also spending a fair bit of time watching. I'm still working my way through the whole Midsummer Murders series. I'm in season 12 right now, which is it's a little bittersweet because I know already that that's the last season that we're going to have um, our regular detective that will have uh, Tom Barnaby and then it's going to switch to his cousin is going to be the new um, lead detective. So I'm curious to see what I'm going to think. It's going to take me a while to get used to the new guy because I really do like the the original guy but so it is kind of bittersweet to know that that's the last season that I'll see him on the show but I've been thoroughly enjoying that I I really I, I spent a lot of time watching Midsummer Murders episodes while working on my round two socks and between working on my Diamond Art, I've also been working on my Coziest Memory cardigan. Uh, this is a pattern, I'm following the pattern by Kemper Ray, it's the Coziest Memory. And I have not tucked in any tails yet, I will be doing that soon. I'll get a start on that. But since I last saw you, all the squares that have the yellow markers are the new ones. So starting with that pink one here. So I've added seven, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I've added seven new squares on here. The yarn I'm using for this uh, right now, exclusively using my Row One Mini yarn. I am also doing this, I'm holding the yarn double so it is a DK, it's coming out a DK weight. So this is going to make for a nice, squishy, wonderful squishy blanket, or not blanket. It's going to, it's going to wear like a blanket, but it's going to be a cardigan once I'm done. So I'm kind of making this up as I go along. I will continue just going back and forth, adding rows until I have it to the length I want in the body up to the armhole and then I think I'll just I'll figure out what I'm doing on the neckline I haven't quite decided how I'm going to deal with that but I'm going to leave an opening for the sleeves and then just continue using the squares up the front and continue going up the back and then I will do just do squares around for the arms that's the plan. We'll see how it goes once I get there. And I will keep you posted as I get there. So like I said, I have not done at the ends yet. What I plan on doing, and anytime I've made any kind of project like this, is once I have all the squares done, let me just figure out a way to hold this so I can try to show you. Once I have them in a point where I've got the four squares joined then I will tuck in these tails. So once I add four more 
on here. I'm going to go back and tuck in all the tails between row one and row two. So we'll get all of all of these ones done up here. The ones that are up here at the on the the finished part of row two, I will wait until I've added three, and I'll do the same as I've done here. I will tuck in the ends. So I might start tucking in a few of them in the first part because like I say I've got eight. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I've got eight already added. I might go back and just add in, or just tuck in these tails. And this one from the very beginning. That one has to be tucked in as well. But I will be doing the, tucking in the tails as I go, to, to some extent, just because I don't want it to become too overwhelming once I get to the end. I'm not going to leave it till the very end and then tuck in a million tails. No. I, I'm one of those weird people I actually don't mind tucking in the tails, but I don't dislike it. I don't dislike tucking in tails, but I don't want to have to do a complete marathon session with that many to do. It's drinking ordinary plain black tea today. Actually, it's Earl Grey my little butterfly cup then that was from Hershey butterfly gardens or Hershey gardens in the butterfly enclosure so that's it for my knitting content <laughs> finished two pair of socks and added seven squares on to my coziest memory cardigan I have been eyeing up my jelly roll cardigan or the blanket that I'm uh, that's by Kay Jones, I think, is the designer of that pattern. I'm, I need to get started on adding more to that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all my sock yarn scraps and start pulling off 10 grams of each one. I think I, maybe I'll, what I'll do is I'll pull off 10 grams of one of them, add that and see how far that takes me on my uh, granny stripe. Not granny stripe. Did I call it a grant? No, I don't think I called it a granny stripe before, did I? I hope not. My jelly roll cardigan. So I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll pull out a 10, 10 gram little ball of yarn of fingering weight and then that way I can do that held double and I'll see how, how many inches a little strip that will add on there. And then that way I'll know whether using 10 grams is going to work out well or, or what. But I do need to get some work on that. I think what I want to do first is I want to get the next four squares added on to my coziest memory card again. So I can have the second row finished, then I can tuck in all the tails. And then I want to spend some time working on the jelly roll, uh, the jelly roll card again, and get some work done on that. And from all of my row one mini yarns, I have I've used up everything from I first subscribed December was the first month I got, so I've used up everything. I've added in everything from December January. February I pulled out four of the neon colors that were in that set and those are going to go into a pair of scrappy type sort of shorty socks. They're all in ice earring bright colors. <laughs> They're going to be fantastic socks. And I think I've taken one out of the, I've got one left from February to add to my coziest memories. And then I have all the ones from March, less one. I've used one already. Then the April one will be coming probably in the next week or so. The, the April yarn will be here. So from all of those, I used roughly seven, a little over seven grams for each of the, the little squares, the mitered squares held double. So I have roughly th a little over three grams left of each of, from each of the colors. Now, 
I'm trying to decide what I want to do with those. I potentially might make a pair of scrappy sort of shorty socks with those. I probably will do at least one pair with those just to see how far each of the, the three grams across two socks, how far that takes me. I'm also considering making a Battenberg blanket. It's a, a crochet blanket that's been, I'm drawing a blank on the designer. I'll put a link to the pattern down in the description. But you make, using fingering weight yarn, you crochet about 476,000 <laughs> little itty bitty squares. Half of them are done in one, uh, one solid color and the other half are done in a whole bunch of little all scraps. So I'm seriously thinking of making one of those. I will be doing a different joining method because I'm not, I don't like a lot of, a, a, I'm not a huge fan of having that little ridge on the back side of the blanket. Um, I think I'll probably just do a whip stitch joining. I think. I haven't decided for sure. Then that way I can kind of make a bunch of squares and add them or join them together and then do a bunch more. I've made in the past, actually one of the designs I have on Ravelry, it's the Around the World Crochet Quilt. That's done in worsted weight where I start with, I think they're two round, two or three round worsted weight granny squares. And they're just all the different colors joined up in an around the world crochet quilt design. I think, if, I think that I'll put a picture up here of what that looks like. And I, I, I like the join method I use with that. So I would crochet a bunch of squares and I would leave a tail. A, I had a, a I had it worked out to just how long I needed to leave the tail and then I would join a bunch together and I would just use the tail from each square to stitch it together and then when I finished stitching on to usually it was onto two sides I would just weave in that end and it was done and I think I want to do the same type of joining method as that for the Battenberg blanket and I really do like the look of it so I'm thinking I might especially for the the more subtle colors of the um, from the real ones I might not use like the really dark ones and the really bright colors but I don't know I, I don't think I'll put this one into the Battenberg that'll go into that one I might the three grams from that might be part of the um, the neon socks that I'm going to be making but the rest of the colors are are probably okay so far would be good for making that little Battenberg blanket. So I'm I'm kind of leaning towards that because I I, I want something to use up all my scraps with. That's that's the rough idea and plan. But we shall see. I'm enjoying it right now. I have exactly two whips. I have the Jelly Roll cardigan and the Mitered Squares cardigan, the Coziest Memories cardigan. I have been itching to start another pair of socks, but I know that I'm going to have Sock Madness round three socks coming up within less than a week. They'll probably be out early next week. So I, I'm trying to refrain from starting another pair of socks. Although the neon ones are awful tempting. I'm awful tempted to get started on those. And this was the, the first sock I made with my December Row one mini yarns. 
So it'll be the same with the, the neon ones. I have four colors and yeah. <laughs> They'll be good. They'll be so good in that uh, bright neon, but they'll they'll look along this this way. So I'm I am tempted to start those just so that I have mindless sock knitting, but mitered squares and the jelly roll are even more mindless because I'm just knitting back and forth and back and forth. Especially the jelly roll. There's like no you just knit turn, knit, turn, knit, turn, just keep going. So, especially for the first row, our first strip. So I'm, I'm really rambling now. So other life things, not much, it's been quiet. Work has been going along well. We're heading into the last month of classes next week. So the semester is starting to wind down. And at the same time, we're starting to get a whole, all kinds of other things starting up for are happening for the end of the semester so we have graduation we have award ceremony we have an open house for incoming students we're having um, an advisory board meeting for our department so there's all these different things there's at least one extra event every week coming up so it's it's keeping things busy work wise looking forward to Easter tomorrow we'll have the sunrise service so I'm crossing my fingers that the weather's not too too bad or at least not too cold tomorrow morning I haven't looked at the forecast so who knows what it's gonna be like and then we have a potluck breakfast after the Easter service like the sunrise service at church then we'll have Sunday school then a regular church service so we're gonna be in church from like 7 in the morning till noon <laughs> It's going to be a long morning. I pretty much can guarantee I will be having a nap on Sunday afternoon. Uh, the hubby always has a nap on Sunday afternoons. I sometimes do. But this Sunday, it's a, pretty much a guarantee because we will be getting up at 5 in the morning. And other than that, this week coming up, I have a dental cleaning on Tuesday morning. That's about it for other stuff for the week. So, again, if you have not yet subscribed, please hit the subscribe button, and I will see you guys again next week. Say goodbye, Olive. Alrighty, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in a week. Bye, everyone.